described uh, data intensive applications as that they should be reliable, scalable, and maintainable. So what approaches can people take to achieve this? Um, well, it's hard to give a very short answer because essentially the, the book is a very long winded 700 page answer to that question. Yeah. Um, but I, I are, think there some the, um, are there some basic principles that they should be looking at? As a basic principle, I would try to um, be very conscious of exactly the operations that are happening and how often they're happening and how they can best be enabled. And so, um, so like for scalability, um, you know, scalability is not a one dimensional product it, pro property. It doesn't make sense to say a system is scalable or non scalable without saying what it's it's uh, scalable with respect to what like generally scalability means like you can increase something and that something might be the amount of data that it stores or the number of queries it handles per second or the number of distinct customers who are using it or the number of concurrent users using it at any one time or any of these various metrics of of how busy the system is and as that metric grows, you want the system as a whole to still provide reasonable performance. And then performance, again, is not a single property, but you could be measuring like, is it the latency of a request until a request gets a successful response? Is it the throughput in terms of, of like gigabytes per second? Uh, what, what is your metric of performance that you're trying to optimize here? And so so I think the uh, the whole domain of scalability essentially is is wanting to say, okay, if if I increase the load in a certain way, where load is defined in some way that makes sense for my application, then I want the performance to still remain good, where performance is defined in some way that makes sense for my application. And once you've broken it down like that, I think then you have a degree of clarity, and then you can say, okay, what we're trying to do is just to store the maximum amount of data possible and we're not going to worry about how it's going to get queried or we're going to make sure that we make our queries really fast and so we need to make sure that our, our scalability is in the query layer and so on so so i think that's that's how i would approach this really because um these the questions are well like the the, the concrete steps that you would take to make an application scalable depend massively on what the application is and what it needs but the steps that you can take in order to figure out how to do that, they, they're repeatable. So the types of questions that you need to ask yourself, uh, and those are the sort of questions that the book tries to teach you to ask. And of course, you don't just talk about systems and architecture, you also talk about data models, which you've described as one of the most important parts of developing software. Run us through the importance of data models and your thought process behind those. Yeah, when, when people compare data systems, often data models are like the first thing they, they focus on because it's sort of the, it's just the most big, like it's just the thing up front, really. Um, so for example, when, uh, say, in the, there was a phase in 10 years ago or so when MongoDB came out and there were a bunch of other document databases um, that presented themselves as alternatives to the relational model. Hmm. And they were saying, okay, like it's much nicer to group your data together into these JSON documents rather than uh, having it spread out across a bunch of rows in a relational database. Um, and this is a data model question, right? And and then like people looked at that and they said, yeah, okay, they're, like they're, they have some points there. But actually then over time, what we've seen is that these two different data models have converged somewhat. Um, and so a lot of Relational databases now actually have pretty good JSON support, mm. uh, Postgres and MySQL included. Uh, so, so actually, the the need for a dedicated de type of database to to handle the sort of document model data is not as pressing anymore now because other databases can actually do that. Conversely, in the other direction, some of the document databases have then started adopting relational style query languages because they realized that, that that is actually a really useful feature as well. So, so like for a while, there was this phase where people said like relational and document oriented are like these enemies that uh, they're, they're total opposites of each other. And then it turned out that actually the two just merged and, and, and 
more and more we don't even think of them as two different things, but just two different aspects of a data model that may well be implemented in the same system. Mm -hmm. And it goes, we can apply similar arguments with other types of data models as well. So like a graph data model is, is another one that I quite like. I've, I'm personally quite a fan of graphs because I find them a very flexible way of describing data, uh, like relationships between things. Um, in particular, graphs tend to be very extensible. So if you want to add a new property to something or a new type of relationship between different entities, it's very easy to do that. Um, but how do you represent a graph? Well, you can represent a graph on top of a relational database, for example. That's that's perfectly fine. You don't have to necessarily need to have a, a specialist graph database. A specialist graph database might be able to do some things faster than a, than a relational database, like if you want to do some shortest path queries, for example, or, or other kind of uh, queries that depend on variable length paths through through a data set. Those are things that that SQL databases don't currently support very well, but they do kind of support as well. Um, and so there again, I, I feel like, okay, we've got this graph data model, which is, which is a useful, interesting contrast to the relational model, but at the same time, there's also a bit of convergence going on where, where databases essentially stealing the, the best ideas from other data models and incorporating that. Mm -hmm.